Well, good morning, or good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, today's subject is home automation. I'm always a little. Wow. <laughs> uh, thank you. I'm excited about presenting uh, a topic that I'm very enthusiastic about. I've become way more efficient with my house. My house costs a lot of money to to keep warm and to, uh, to use the electrical lighting, and I eliminate a lot of the cost through home automation. Thanks. This home automation is going to be pretty broad, but it's also going to focus in on Apple's HomeKit app. I'm Wayne, Wayne Mertz. So the benefits are that uh, in home automation, you can use the devices and the hubs to automate minor tasks and chores. It saves time uh, on a lot of things that normally take time to do. It saves money for sure, makes your home much more efficient. And in addition, it is easier to live at home. And this is becoming more and more a market in the country, and that is people that need to be, are in assisted living, can do things with their voice that they never could do before. Ten years ago, it wasn't even an option. So um, people can live longer in their own home or in other places and live a much better quality of life because of home automation. But I, I must uh, warn you that if you get into this, it can be addictive. <laughs> going and going and going. You start with the starter kit, and once you get a starter kit, you may get the bugs. And I got it. Um, what do you need to automate your homes? You need IoT, the Internet of Things. You need, in, that, in essence, the cloud. That's the name that was put out about five, six years ago. I remember at CES they focused on this a lot, the Internet of Things, and it's become an acronym that we all understand now and refer to. Um, it's being able to connect to various websites and, and servers that provide a lot of capability for home automation. In addition, you need a hub, and hubs take a variety of forms. Uh, this is a hub by Wink, Wink 2. This is one of the uh, earlier ad ones. This is a hub. This is the Apple TV hub. Uh, your iPads can be hubs for your house, uh, but we'll get into that very shortly. And you need devices, and devices uh, or accessories, as, as Cupertino or Apple calls them. Um, two general types of uh, devices are sensors, things that sense the uh, outside uh, environment. What's the temperature, what's the humidity, how much light is in the room. And then there are actuator devices. Uh, those are the devices that do something about a change in that environment that you're in. Um, and also what you need to automate your home is a lot of patience because it probably will not work the first time or the second. Hopefully it'll work sometime at, at, in your attempt to do it. The Internet of Things connects all these devices in, in a number of ways and I'll explain some of the vehicles for the connections but you can see it it's into shopping, it's into your house, it's into your iPads, your iPhones. Um, and I, I'll mention again, this is the most important device in my life. That, I don't know what happened. Uh, it's a, it's, to me, it's the most important device that I have. And I got a lot of gadgets. This is uh, at the point at which I want to emphasize in your home, when you're setting up a home automation, a lot of people get frustrated because they use the uh, Xfinity uh, one antenna connection, the uh, hub and, and Wi-Fi that they got, and you expect it to connect something that's 60, 70, 80 feet away, or 120 feet away, or through a, a floor or two, doesn't work. You've got to have more antennas somehow, some way. Technology has made that easier. But in this particular case, you have a, a Wi-Fi that connects to uh, a gateway. And the gateway is like a router. It's the things that distributes the, uh, the 
network information from uh, the, the web, the World Wide Web, into your home and then disseminates as, as needed. On the first floor here, it's connecting to It's connected to a TV. Oh, there's access points. Three access points. And the best way to have an access point uh, do its job is when you wire it. When you wire it with uh, with Ethernet. Cat six is, is probably the best for now type of cable. So you got three access points. You can also do it through mesh networking. That's the newest feature. It makes it very easy. Uh, to set up. You get televisions all the time connect through Wi-Fi and you get 4K high quality transmissions into your television, your high definition, your 4K <coughs> television. The, the middle first floor is a, a thermostat. That's what's connecting there. It's uh, a thermostat in the living room. And on the right uh, is a refrigerator. And uh, refrigerators know they have cameras inside now. At CES, I saw a lot of uh, refrigerators had cameras inside. You know what you got in there. You go in shopping and say, do I need this or do I need that? You get on your app and you see what's inside the refrigerator. It's in addition, it takes uh, pictures of the barcode on the way in and on the way out. And uh, it knows exactly the type that it will, you'll get a, a list on your iPhone about what's inside of a refrigerator. So on the second floor on the left is a, a laptop computer, it looks like that connects. Then there's something on the bedside in the middle room, a master bedroom, and that could be, I have a, an internet radio. I listen to old time radio. I've got about 60 stations that I can listen to a variety of things. Uh, they listen to where I live up north, the station there, the station there. It could be a, a voice uh, connection to your to your home automation, and you could say, good night. And when it said when you say that, all the lights go out. It's whatever you have programmed in there shuts it down. Um, and it could be all kinds of programs. A lot of people have laptops, and that's how you watch television. Uh, before you, while you're falling asleep. Then the one on the right is uh, is the garage, and uh, I have a demo on that at the end. Hopefully, I can, you know, technology will work for me. And uh, in my garage, I have things connected. I have an antenna in my garage. Uh, uh, I use the amplify system, and I have a, a access point there, an antenna, and it connects to my ratio irrigation system. It connects to my uh, door, automated door lock. It connects to my garage door. I have a man door and an overhead door, garage door, it connects to that. And it connects to my uh, car. Uh, I download the latest programming from the manufacturer and it, and it updates the system, including the mapping system and so on. And up above on that access point is a speaker system. Very common to have in automation uh, speaker systems. So it all connects to the cloud, and it's important to have your infrastructure or your Wi-Fi network set up properly and makes it work. What you think might not work works when you have a good automated uh, uh, local area network Wi-Fi system. Hubs, this is, these are the things that home automation <coughs> focuses in on inside of your house. In fact, I have what I call a hub farm. I have about three or four uh, on top of a central area in the house, and my router uh, has a switch that, uh, actually it's a PoE switch, power over Ethernet, so I don't have to run a lot of electricity <coughs> to it. Connect it to the back of the hub and the hub. Uh, generates. This is the one weakness in a lot of this is these individual hubs. Uh, let's see. <coughs> I don't have a, a hub here. Uh, an ex 
example would be a Phillips Hue hub. Might not reach all the way. And the other one is the uh, Lutron hub. Doesn't quite reach all the way to the other end of the house. It does have a feature that it can piggyback on another local device. It's called something like meshing. Um, but these are the, these number of the hubs are multiple manufacturers. Smart Things is one that I'll be talking about, um, and Wink is another one uh, that grabs a lot of different manufacturers. Besides the big ones like <coughs> Amazon, Google, and uh, and Apple Car uh, Apple uh, Home Care. <coughs> these are managed by your cell phones. They're, all the apps for those hubs are on this on the phone here. I'll, I'll show you a little bit when I hook my phone up to the computer. It's best to wire these hubs. Something you can do wireless, but it's always best to have a category 5E or 6. Don't use 5 anymore, 5E or 6. And uh, most of the devices connect wirelessly. All of them connect, connect wirelessly, to, wirelessly to the hubs. And I just mentioned the voice hubs, the, the big three. Here's an example of a voice hub. This is the Echo Plus. This one goes wireless, as a matter of fact. And uh, this, is, this is the one that set off home automation about four, three or four years ago uh, to the extent that it's become like an $8.3 billion uh, uh, market in the world today. Not just this one, home automation. And it, this one does, I believe it does Zigbee, Z-Wave, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Those are the frequencies, the radio frequencies that uh, Amazon has put into the Echo Plus. That's a hub. Um, this one is uh, Google's Home Hub. Google has a home, which is just a speaker. This came out about nine months ago, and this is a home hub. And it's put around the kitchen because you can say, I want to make guacamole, and it'll give you the recipes and show you how to do it. I just mentioned this quickly, but uh, Apple, Apple's home kit needs a hub, and any one of these three works. This is the, the home pod, or the iPad, or the Apple TV, third or fourth generation. Before that, it doesn't have the hub capability, and it works wonderfully. I, try, I don't really know which one in my house. I have a few Apple TVs. I don't use the iPad that much. Sorry. <laughs> and uh, I've got a couple of those speakers. I'm not sure which one controls it. But all I know is my wife can say, water my flowers. And it goes on just in the two sections of our uh, irrigation system to get the flowers. Because she always got mad at me for not being able to water the flowers separately and I have to set up the system. Now it's just like that. That's uh, the whole kit hub options that you have. This is another, these are the versatile hubs. This is uh, smart thing. It's been around for quite a while, about four years, and uh, uh, they they were required by Samsung about uh, maybe a year and a half ago, and they're one of the strong ones. Wink and SmartThings are the two non-big ones. There's a there's the Wink Hub 2. Oh, the unique thing about this hub is that the ability to communicate by a variety of ways uh, is important because you can add different devices that. If you only have two two radios, you can only use, they typically are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. One of the weaknesses of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi is that if you have a device that's quite a ways away and you use it, it only connects wirelessly by Wi-Fi, it takes a lot of battery power. That's the way the slave lock systems are and other all the <coughs> Wi-Fi lock systems because they, they burn up the battery every every year. So you gotta plan on it because 
you really don't want to be away and not have the ability to open the door when you, you'd like to. This one is the most, one of the most complete. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a couple of home automation frequencies, Z-Wave and Zigbee. Z-Wave was the most prominent one. Zigbee came along, but they're not nearly as popular in devices as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And the last one is uh, Clear Connect. Clear Connect is only one line of products, and that's Lutron. And I'll talk more about this. This is the best home automation product that there is for lighting, almost for, for anything. Bluetooth or uh, Clear Connect and Lutron. Oh, and then there's this one. This little device is one that um, if you're worried about security, this is the one to get. But you better be a better know how to write code because it doesn't connect to the internet. You can do whatever, typically whatever every all these other ones can do uh, internally if you program the Hubitat. It's called Hubitat. I I bought it. I tried it. It's a, not me. <laughs> Too complex? Art? Too complex? Too complex. I'm not a, I can't, I can write a little code. People have a problem with that. <laughs> write a little code. So these, now we're getting into the Philips. These, these are the product oriented, specific product oriented. And Philips Hue is a very good one. And it's the leader in uh, color lighting. You can put all kinds of shade. Color, you can, I have on my, you'll see when I put up the phone, whenever the uh, Buffalo Sabres play, Bulls, I got a couple lights that go blue and yellow for team colors. And then when the Bills play, they go red and blue. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I connect to it. This is the Lutron app, and uh, that's the Lutron hub, the, I think it's called Smart. Smart Bridge, Smart Bridge 2 is the one you need, Smart Bridge 2. And um, an enormous amount, lighting is a big application for home automation, and this really works. They've got to figure it out. They've got to figure it out. I might want to mention right here and now that uh, it's important when you're using these other hubs, uh, instead of going to home kit first and try to add devices, always go to the hub that the manufacturer uh, provides or the app that they provide, load it onto the system, and then HomeKit or Amazon or Google will pick it up. It took me a long time to figure that out because I couldn't figure out why they weren't lining up, and that's because it's really designed to do the individual app first, the individual through the individual hub, and then go on to the bigger hubs the voice levels. Nest has a system, uh, works with Nest, but it's, uh, it doesn't have as many products. It came out, gangbusters, they built a wonderful um, thermostat that really revolutionized uh, home automation. It's a, it's a big application for home automation, but there aren't many products that work with Nest. It's been tossed around quite a bit. Then there are these I, I call them cloud hubs. And uh, these are things that get devices to talk to each other that otherwise wouldn't talk to each other. A good example is um, my wife doesn't worry about the cost of much. And, uh, <laughs> she isn't here. I'm glad she's not here. This <laughs> Takes. She wants to go out on the pet and go out the little eye. She whips the door open and like, walks out, and it, you know, and the air conditioner would go and go and go. I've tried to, yeah. I've tried the air condition uh, Ford Miners for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, can't do it. Uh, it. Actually, it's the next one. Another good example. Well, I just mentioned it. And these, this hub allowed me to connect one system to my. Uh, uh, down here it's the uh, Honeywell system and whenever that sensor opens up that uh, says 
provides an instruction to Honeywell's thermostat that you are to change the temperature setting for air conditioning from, we keep it at 77 to go to 86, which means it's not going to kick in. It shuts it off. And then when it closes, it sets it back to 77. And that saves a lot of money. <laughs> if we did that, we would save a lot of money in this country. Is there any information on that? I'm fascinated with that. I have PTT. I, no, the, the number of applications they have started out slow, but it's grown enormously. And there's over a thousand pages like this of different applications, hubs, and devices that you can connect to. And, and somebody else has, and they have an enormous menu, but you can't even go through it all, about applications. You know, you say, well, I've got a, an Ecobee thermostat, and I have uh, a smart things window or door sensor and it'll say it's run on a smart things hub and it'll tell you someone has written an application that says if this opens you can do this uh, so IFTTT is on but I understand I just heard last week that IFTTT is somewhat putting itself up for for a purchase and it may be challenging sometimes these things <laughs> have to have a way to make money, and some of them struggle with that. Uh, Stringify is another hub-based, or cloud-based hub, and it's the one I've used a few times, and it's really, can get very, IFTTT has usually got two devices with one characteristic. If the temperature goes to 60, do this, uh, or down to 60, do this. This thing, you could say the temperature goes down to 60, and it's somewhere between October and April, then do this, and then do that. Or this, you know, turn the, up north we have to turn sometimes, we have pipe heaters on, it's because they gotta keep the, uh, keep the pipes liquid. String of five does, does some really good things and very detailed, you can get very complicated, a lot of granularity in running that. Here's an example of, um, this is a, the green thing is a button on someone's phone, and when the person who was trying to get their attention in the house says, you press that button, the uh, Wi-Fi goes to pause, the Wi-Fi system goes to pause, and they get, must have a desk or something in the master bedroom, and the lights go down, or start blinking, or go up, or something, I don't know, but that's what, when I read this, I thought that's what they do, it was an example of what Stringify can do to things that, this is a Xfinity uh, based hub, and they're cutting it off, or pausing it. Here's an example of a hub and the various things it can connect. Um, you see power, there's a lot of power devices that and you can get the stuff that's <coughs> actually a receptacle that you buy, you install, or you can get one of these that you add on. This is a nine device, quite sophisticated. Also acts as a night light. I'm all about pathway lighting at night. And I'm all about making it automatic. I don't have to say anything or do anything. When I walk in there, with there's a sensor. Turn on this light so I can find the bathroom and um, and, and find my way back without stumbling. Um, that's what really home automation is about. That's I don't have to say turn the lights on because my wife would wake up. Uh, power thermostats extremely uh, one of the highest efficiency type of home automation thing. Smoke alarms connect now. I don't have that because I'm in a couple of condos. And, uh, lighting, we talked about the appliances we discussed. Locks are uh, part of the security system, perimeter uh, control, and uh, they're very effective. The garage is a unique thing. I talked about sprinklers. There's more and more Wi-Fi control robots on your lawn cutting the grass. They 
you put a grid on there, you, co you coordinate the grid, and it'll cut all the grass. And they're about this big. Uh, I'm, I'm going to hook up to the Home Depot website, and I think there's examples of those there. And cameras uh, and garage we talked about. Cameras I use quite a bit. I have a good demo if I can pull it off. So just to jump back to the, the sensors, the types of devices, uh, they monitor external things. They monitor temp temperature, humidity, movement, big, big uh, application, light intensity. Water links is another one. Uh, this is becoming more popular in the past two years. That is, um, up north we have some pumps in the, in the basement, or uh, I've had two incidences where uh, I was the recipient of the wall board falling off my wall, and I caused the wall board <laughs> falling off the wall downstairs, and it was because of actually contractors doing uh, an inappropriate installation, and it caused uh, a lot of damage. If I had a sensor underneath that uh, sink, it would have, <coughs> now it couldn't do it five years ago or 10 years ago. The sensor goes off, and if you have a uh, an automatic valve that's connected typically by Zigbee radio wave, and it turns the main line off. The water gets shut off by the whole house. And uh, it, sooner or later, you're going to get benefits from insurance companies because <coughs> you have that feature. They can uh, confirm. And the other sensors are open and closing of doors and it's not a, not important when you're all around but it's important if you're away or in the middle of the night. Then the actuators are the switches, the sockets, uh, uh, smart valves on the pipe, that's what I was just talking about. That's the actuator device. Um, sirens, uh, thermostats do things about it when the slider opened up. Check, uh, the, the thermostat received this information from the sensor and it, sent, and it shut off the air conditioner. And it can send you notifications, either email or, or uh, messages, iMessages on your phone. So, this is the Home Depot website. We put my fingers crossed on this. Good. So far, so good. I had some notes. So this is this is the this is the path I used Home Home Depot and then Smart Home and then you get this side of Home Depot. You can do this on Amazon too, but there they drive towards the products that they own or sell. But this is a, a broader based uh, re retailer, so um, you can see. Uh, the list there, a couple of lists, and then works with Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa. This is the one that we focus on if we want to stay in the Apple and the ecosystem is works with Apple HomeKit. Smart Things. Uh, Nest is one that we talked about, and Wink is that last one over there. Those are the, the hubs, the big hubs. And uh, three of these I know are great with the voice side. Um, smart home hubs. We, this is the Apple Hue Bridge, Smart Bridge. This is one that does uh, this hub. Uh, you plug it into the wall actually uh, nearby, and this thing will do just if you wanted to water your plants at a certain time. Or if, if, it, if this one might connect to Alexa and it, and it would turn on a hose that would water the plants, you've got one of these sprinklers in, and you turn it off after a certain while. This is, again, the Caseta. That's the line of Lutron. Lutron does 
This is <coughs> like the lower end, which is very good for most home lawn affirmation applications. It's called Lutron Caseta. Uh, and that's that's the hub right there. Uh, it's called <coughs> the Smart Bridge. And this is the hub for uh, the hue plating. I got a sample of this this uh, light strip. And I use that on accents all over the place, underneath the sink or in a, in a <coughs> center area for dining. Behind my TVs I do it. And there, I haven't done this, but there's an application that if you're watching a movie, it changes the background color of the hue of the color so that it matches whatever the color of the picture is. It makes it easier to watch TV instead of, <clears throat> especially in the darker room. Okay, well that's that's the general back to this one. Um, anyone I want to emphasize here? Smart Wi-Fi extenders. This, uh, these are things that make your Wi-Fi system stronger. This one specifically for the um, the slave's lock system. Aris has a number of most most uh, modems that come in are Aris type of modems. I'm not sure what Xfinity has. I don't use it. Uh, I have Xfinity, but I use my own uh, modem. And uh, these are the various types right here. And extenders. This is just a small term. I go to Amazon and you can get some really good systems, mesh systems. Okay, let's get out of this one and go back to here. There's a question. Yeah, could you could you go back to that Home Depot site and hit on the Apple devices? I don't let's see. Uh, it was the uh, I didn't see Apple. It, yeah, it was hard to get right there. Yeah. Let's see what happened. And what I was interested in is the lighting. Now, the lighting there is different than the hub and everything else you showed before for the Lutron. Yeah, this is, these, these are, this is lighting for Caseta. That's this package right here. This is the starting package, Lutron Caseta. So you have to buy that, and that's not shown as one of the things there. It's, it's the first one. Right? Oh, that is the first one. That is. That's okay. it. Right there. We try to see them. And it comes with this thing called the Pico Remote. I don't have enough time to explain all the <laughs> benefits of this, but if you had a, if you had a, if this was a wired one that goes over there, and then you wanted to have it right here, you just take this device and you use one of these wrappers Put it right there. It's just there's a background here. It's screwed into the wall. It's got like an eight-year battery, and they can turn the lights on and off from that little what they call a Pico remote. In fact, in my house, right by the exit, or the way I leave the house almost all the time is the garage. I have about 20 different devices hooked to this, including fans. And I hit that, it turns everything off. Upstairs, downstairs, in the basement. In the second floor and on the main floor. I think I have about 20 devices on that. So, my question of that is um, like in our kitchen area, you flip this switch over here, it turns on the lights. If you switch the switch over there, it'll turn them off or on. You switch the switch over there, say it turns the same ones off or on. So, do you have to have all those on uh, uh, one of those smart switches on every one? Well, when you buy this, it's about, I don't know what they're selling it for now, it's about $55 when I bought, I bought, for each house I bought 20 packages of this stuff, because my wife says I want all the ability to dim everything, I want to be able to dim everything, which is nice for, if you like the home interior stuff, and I like the features of getting this Pico remote, as well as this, and the Pico remote, I don't use all the dimmers as a second location, but if I need one, if you needed one, you just take the wires on that one and wire them together. It's always hot, and this thing controls it all, this Pico remote. 
you can turn them on and off from any one of those locations. You take the existing switch out, you put a wire nut on all the connections, like it's, it's hot wired, and this will control it as well. You need one switch, you need one of these, but you can have three or four of these. So even if I have four switches that turn the lights on and off, the same lights on and off, I only need one of those. If, the, if, you, if you had an application where you have, like, like I have, if I have about 15 different switches for fans or, or uh, lighting, or I can't think of anything else right now, and I program the ball through that app, through the uh, Neutron Caseta app, I press this button and they all go off. Or I press that button and they all go on. In other words, if we want a lot of light fast, you know, and you can do, you can have one of these buttons, you can put it on your nightstand. This will take a little stand for it, or you, you can stick it to a double face tape right on the side of the nightstand. You want to turn the lights, all the lights on or all the lights off? You can do it with one of those Pico remotes. Yes, you Unbelievable will. the lights. Yes, you will. Yes. Yes. Oh, the other thing, that's the uh, thermostat that I have. Uh, the thermostat that's the Eco P4. Made in Toronto. We'll go back out of this. I think I mentioned these all over. This is to wire by Ethernet, then we have a wire for you. Then you go to radio, uh, the radio wave. Best to hardwire anything that you can, if you can. Uh, so then you go to radio waves. Wi Fi, I mentioned, is a power hungry uh, medium. And you better, you better have, uh, uh, it's best to be nearby or you're going to use a lot of batteries. Bluetooth, Z-Wave, Zigbee, Thread is another one that's come, come about recently, but it hasn't caught on a lot. That's a, a radio frequency mode. And finally, Clear Connect out of Lutron. It's not 2.4 gigahertz, it's not 5 gigahertz, it's a a separate frequency that Lutron owns by itself, and that's why those things are extremely reliable. Um, this is the, the best applications for home automation, lighting entertainment. Entertainment's a changing thing, and once you program something, it may not last very long. If you're in, you want a, a one remote control device, the Harmony uh, Elite is a and it has its own hub. And it uses a lot of the features where you connect to it through your Wi-Fi system. And on, that's, that's how it connects, the signal connects. And then it distributes it to um, most of the stuff is controlled nowadays by infrared. And it connects wires. And you have to put them on the spot where the infrared sensor is on your electronics. But that's changing. TVs are going to be controlled by internet protocol or by a network system, by Wi-Fi. What is that Harmony? I'm sorry. What? The Harmony one? What was the name? Har Harmony uh, Elite. There might be another Harmony something Elite. But it's, uh, it was about 350 bucks for the package. One remote, and they got programming in this for almost every piece of entertainment device you can think of. It takes a little time to program, but once you got it, you're going to blow it. I want someone to add a little bit of it. It's got a small, uh, pick, a, a, a small uh, screen on it, and you can use the screen for the, for the puppets themselves. Lighting. Well, I mentioned uh, security. Landscaping, thermostats, and kitchens. Now there is, I see the word security, it's talking about perimeter security and so on, but I want to mention something about home automation and uh, companies that gather information, like Amazon, like uh, Google, 
Apple's pretty darn good about it. They're focused on this, and, and this privacy is important. Privacy is an issue. Sorry about that. Uh, I know, that's that's one of my higher calls, which says it's a... Uh, yeah. So, it says security or convenience. Convenience is down here and security is high. If you go this way, there's a balance, and then you go this way, this is for convenience and less security. And I'm more like this somewhere. I, I like convenience. From the day Amazon was out, I've been buying stuff on Amazon, on the internet, and I have never been hit, and I do all my banking on the internet. I have never been hit, and I've done it for a long time, at least a decade. So, that's, you know, they gather information, no question about it, but I don't think they gather much about me. They don't care. It's they, they want to know mass data so they can figure out what to send me on the computer when I, uh, when I open up Amazon, what I should be looking at. We talked about, oh, kitchen and bath appliances. Uh, I mentioned this about the CES presentation. And a lot of that has to do with, um, that CES stuff has to do with uh, really long-term ideas. One of them was a mirror where women put makeup on <coughs> And it, you can program it to say, I'm going to a nightclub, dark, or I'm going to uh, a garden walk, and it brightens it up, and you put the appropriate, or I'm going to a dinner at, at Denny's or something, a different type of restaurant, and it, it lights up accordingly the type of environment. And the, and the, the commode has got more stuff in it than you can possibly <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why not? It's not, not unrealistic to say it's going to be a five or six thousand dollar thing. Mood lighting, music, temp, water temperature, all kinds of stuff. You got one? No. <laughs> this is a, a ratio, this is a little thing, and, and just like this, hey sir, and water the flowers, what this guy brings up his phone, presses that, and it turns on. It's just a quick demo there. Ratio, this is the latest one. This works with HomeKit. Uh, this is coming out like, uh, well, this spring. It better be out soon for this spring. Most of the installers with, of irrigation systems, two years ago, didn't want to have anything to do with this now. But now they're connecting to it. They're connecting to it more and more. I had, a pro I had to tell them how to program this thing. <laughs> and this is one of my favorites. This is where I talk about the slider opening up. Um, the, it does, I can get temperature, every, I get a report, temperature every six minutes. And I can tell if the, if the uh, furnace went down or the electricity went out or so on by monitoring that. I just put it on and I say search for anything that's less than, uh, I set it to 58 degrees in Buffalo. And uh, it'll tell me. 58? 58. 58. 58, when no one's around. Wait. I was going to say, it's a little high. Wait. Wait. Yes, sir. Uh, I use this as well, but I could be four. Uh, with my Alexa, and, and I have PTP, and, and it works fine. But you usually. You really strongly recommend changing to Stringify from from IFTTP. Well, uh, no, I, I, I mean I do exactly. If it works, whatever it works with. Hey, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but there are like us, a lot of us who keep trying to fix it, and then it breaks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I'm going to look into Stringify. But, uh, but, Stringify, you look at because. You'll be amazed at how easy it is to use and how sophisticated you can get. I have a lot of IFTTT things. It does an, an amazing amount of it. You know, just tell Alexa to start my car. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, one of those guys will be around. Samsung owns Stringify, and IFTTT is looking for a, a buyer right now. Since I've done mainly Alexa, okay, it's all my, I have a lot of stuff controlled by Alexa. 
using the IFTTT or string of flags? Can I switch to other brands also? Or I think so. I think you could try that. Um, I'm, I'm not a big Alexa user. Uh, I don't want to talk that much. I want to do things. <laughs> One of the simple things is you get a sensor. I put a few of these in the house, and it just turns the light on when I when it senses it, instead of having me to program um, when it, that I want to have it go off. I just put a timer on for four minutes, and it, it goes off. Um, and I put those in, and that doesn't have to be connected to anything. It's still home automation. It's very simple. You have to change. You know, you have to go through the electric user or hire an electrician to do it. But it's pretty basic. A bit of sense of about electricity and mechanics. You can get that thing off, turn, turn, the, turn the circuit breaker off, and then make sure it's off. A little wire tester. I used to be an electrician, so I don't have any problems with that part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the rest of it, right? But try it. You know that? That's something. I'll look. I also have a I had a lecture, and I think you were going to talk about Apple and, and you know, what happens. Yeah. So, um, well, Apple's gotten much better. They were late to the game. Right. Alexa blew up on the market about three years ago, four years ago, with, with its voice assistant. And then it piled on all the home automation very quickly. Everybody was writing an app for, because it opened up its API it, application programming. Uh, Apple didn't do that. And they had to have a sensor. A, you had to have a specific chip in each of the works with uh, Apple's home kit with the products. That made a slow rise in the market for them. But that has changed. They've gotten into just uh, uh, just the firmware. And, it, and you can change the firmware on a lot of these things. And when they do that, it makes it personal and works with home kit. Any other questions? Yes? I want to just a comment. Um, uh, we just moved into a house that um, Lenard is building, which is called the Smart House. So we're sort of on the ed lagging edge of what we've been talking about. But the advantage of the Alexa as a hub is that we're all used to talking to her. And many people, I bet everybody in this room has an echo somewhere in their house. And, and they've developed that technology now. So, so we're, all, we're all very familiar with how to talk to her and turn on my light. I mean, I can turn on my lights, lock the doors, turn open my garage door, all the things you're talking about, the voice commands to a light started. And it's, it's just that they're really on the leading edge of this whole thing, not from a voice point of view. And the, the big benefit of that is, as you become less mobile, you can do these things. Yeah without having to find your way out to get that button on the other side of the door to open up the wrap. Yeah, right. I need to watch your Talk to Alexa. Just say, Alexa. Right. Yeah. 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 Or you can say you can change it to computer by the way. Because a lot of, you know, the radio stations are saying, and if you want to, if you want to listen to this radio station, say, Alexa, go to WGR radio. And all of a sudden, your radio turns on <laughs> <and> WG, <laughs> your speakers, you know, they know what they're doing. Do you think that any of these, things, my sister will, she won't have one because she thinks this, this fine on us. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's what I was talking about, you know, security versus uh, payments. Do you think they are? Uh, well, I've never had a problem. Well, they can, what are they going to get? Yeah. What am I getting? Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, they haven't seen it by now, it's time they did. Arthur, they haven't seen it by now. It's time they did. <laughs> so let's see. This is another great one. This is the uh, Chamberlain and Liftmaster are owned by the same company. I had one bought the other one. I can't remember who it was. But uh, this opens and closed from the iPhone. And at CES, I learned that they have an integration now that you're going to be able to tell Amazon. When you deliver this, uh, use my, here's my garage door. Uh, they're going to ask for something. And they're going to be able to pull up without even ringing the bell. Maybe they'll ring the bell or something. They pull up, you got a, a, a box, they'll put it in your garage, and they'll go. And I think they're, it's not available yet, but they're going to, they had that picture was one of these garage door openers 
that's connected to them. And you don't even need this if you have a MyQ garage door. It's got MyQ on it from LiftMaster or from Chamberlain. If it says MyQ on it, it's got the connection in it. And uh, um, it'll be, you'll be able, to, be able to deliver that, but they also had a, a image of a camera. I think they want to be able to watch it too. Yeah. yeah, they have that for the front door now. They have lock system. For the yeah, that door. right. That one's around. Then yeah. the, the other one was the one that goes to the trunk. Yes. Oh, you're at work, right? Yeah. You get you you get the code. They got the code. They can pop your trunk, put whatever you want in there, and then um, just deliver. Not a bad thing. I use next garage. So these this is the the other mm -hmm. Casada oh, systems. Yeah. I like halfway lighting. I mentioned, um, we talked about the all on and all off remote, that Pico remote. There's a, the other feature about this is uh, you can program it on your Lutron app. You can program for geofencing. That is, you get close to your house and it'll turn whatever light or lights you want on. And it'll unlock the door if you would like that. Or and it'll open up the garage door. Okay. You can, uh, geo fencing and uh, if you're doing it with lighting on Lutron, that's what I mentioned before, is program it with the Lutron app first. Program it with the Chamberlain or the uh, MyQ app first and then with the geo fencing in the long run. With geo fencing, how many faults I mean, animals coming into your area? <coughs> What that no, it's your phone. Phone. Oh, your phone. Your phone. It's your phone once it gets into that perimeter. Oh, I take okay. a walk and I, I think it's about 150 <laughs> yards is what I I take a walk in the evening and I look and the light goes on. Okay. I know no one's holding. <laughs> you hold. Yeah. <laughs> Security is a big area. Do it yourselfers is very common. And uh, Here's examples of, this is, you know, where we talked about uh, different types of devices, sensors and actuators. Uh, the one on the upper left is rings. Uh, they were bought by Amazon not too long ago. The one on the right is Nest. They're a Google control operation now. <clears throat> and then this other one is called uh, Simply Safe, well publicized in the country. I've seen it in the Wall Street Journal and on the radio. And then the lower right is probably the most do-it-yourselfer type of uh, a security system. That is a boat. I have that a boat. And uh, it has a few radios in it and I can connect to my one Z-Wave only uh, lock that I have that's from the garage to the house. And it, it works very well. I was trying to figure out, I got to open it up because I got a contractor coming in to do something. I wasn't sure if I was able to do that. They checked on this and there it was. I unlocked it. By the way, every night at 10 o'clock, I lock all the locks automatically. That's, that's what home automation does. You don't even think about it. All right. Um, security locks, cameras, video doorbell. Uh, maybe I'll show you a video doorbell when we get up when I connect the phone. And uh, perimeter sensors, geofence, geofencing the lighting. Perimeter control, all the doors and all the windows that you have. You uh, just attach these wireless devices and they have about a three, four, five year battery. And it opens up. I, know, I don't have any of mine connected to the police. Um, cost me too much money years ago to pay the 50 bucks whenever they had a, a, a false alarm. So yeah. it just it, it sends out a big siren, it gives me a notification uh, that I was I sent the per, set the perimeter, notifies me and if I think there's a problem and I'm not up the north, I'll call one of my kids and say, hey go take a look. Pardon? Use the camera to check it. That's yeah, that's a, that's another way, right. So I use a couple of these. These are pretty good. I'll show you an example of one of this. Um, inside I have the, the Nest. Works very good. And it also has an app. Nest has an app on the Apple TV. It's, it's an app. So I can go to that. My wife goes to it. 
and looks in, uh, inside the house and makes sure everything is okay. And the, on the outside, I bought this Avertex. It also has an app on the Apple TV. And I've got four cameras on the perimeter. That means you can watch it on the TV? Is that what you're saying? Right on the Apple TV. I, I was shocked when I saw that. It was there. Okay. And so you both the Nest and they work very well. I'll show you an example here yeah. shortly. Hardware? Hard, hardware or wi -Fi? Uh, this this is hardwired. The external ones are hardwired, but Nest is Wi-Fi. Nest does not have an Ethernet uh, connection. It's only Wi-Fi. A little bit about Apple's HomeKit. I'm not going to be able to do what I wanted to on this because of the time, but you run Apple's HomeKit, you've got to be logged into the same Wi-Fi as the device. That's important. Sometimes if you've got a guest network or something like that, you can get goofed up. But just lower the priority of the guest network and use, uh, use the main system. The device has to be powered up. Sometimes people forget that. You have to download the app, um, but you can uh, on, on the iOS app. And now this is with the past uh, big upgrade for iOS, or excuse me, the OS system on the computer, they put HomeKit on uh, the computers, on the Macs. And uh, it works very well, but you can't add any devices on the computer for some reason. I'm sure it'll come later, but they, they didn't include it in this first <coughs> version. Um, you have to sign into iCloud, and you have to uh, enable Keychain and the home app. Uh, and that is important to be done because otherwise you won't connect to all this stuff. Any questions on that? Some people don't like iCloud. Yeah. Yeah. Is that you can connect to the home pod that way? Oh, uh, what? Can you connect to home pod through that or do you need the home pod app? Well, I think when you, with the home pod, if I'm not mistaken, just turn it on and it's connecting to your wireless system. Uh -huh. But in order to get all the features, you have to be an iCloud. If you want to run your HomeKit applications, you have to be connected to iCloud. How big a cloud do you need for all this? How big a cloud do you need for all this? I have the, I think it's a $2 a month feature. And, um, it works well. I think I forget what it is. Fifty gigs or something. Fifty gigs. Fifty gigs. Half gigs. Whatever it is, that's about. It works pretty good. So hopefully this is working for all this stuff. Um, I wanted to show. Uh, this is the. Apple's app and it talks about the home kit, but I wanted to get down to these works with home kit at the bottom down there, and these are all of the various devices. I have some fans, I have three fans up north and three fans down here that work. I can turn them on, turn them off from anywhere in the world, and uh, including my little Pico device when I want to go away and hit it. I mean, mm -hmm. They all turn off. Then how many adapters you can add to fans that exist already, or do you have to change the whole thing? That's coming out now. That they're starting that feature now, but now, up until now you had to buy a whole new. Um, what is that stuff coming out? I mean, I've got a lot of things. Like I've got an eco B. I've got uh, the ring doorbell. I've got a garage. I've got the garage door thing. Problem is, I got all those two or three years ago. And I've got apps for every one of them. I can turn them on from anywhere. Yeah. But they don't go into HomeKit. Right. They don't go into HomeKit. No. No. My doorbell <laughs> ring does. I don't think ring goes into uh, uh, Apple into the home. Well, my EcoBee, since it's a couple of years old, it's not compatible. Mine is. Oh, a couple of years old. Mine's the but, four. But what I'm saying are, are they yeah. coming out with stuff that's gonna that's gonna bring all those old ones back in if you have a hub sitting at home? The latest, the latest EcoBee 
has uh, Alexa on it. Yeah. And you could talk, it's like an Alexa device also. But you could say, um, Alexa, set the temperature at 72. And it will change the temperature. So that it will hold it there. But I don't think the old ones are going to ever, ever be, you're going to have to upgrade. Yeah, you're going to have to upgrade probably. Yes. Right. If I upgrade all those devices, it's going to cost a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, that's probably. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> but you'll be able to save two dollars a month. I don't know if I got the right button here. Oh, these are the devices that are work that work with HomeKit. This is just a sample of it, but bridges, cameras, lights. I want to go to the other one. Oh, yeah. 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 Learn more about setup. I just told you about setup. See all the accessories. This used to be like 50 items. Now it's a whole lot more. These are TVs that are going to have whole automation. They're going to have airplay in them, and they're going to have Apple TV. Coming soon inside the television. What's airplay? What? What is airplay? Airplay is uh, is wireless connection to a speaker oh. or some other device. Maybe it's a wireless connection from your TV to your to your um, speakers. They go to speakers. Airplay can lights and to your um, your Denon uh, receiver, AV okay. receiver, and it connects. So you. In other words, they're eliminating wires. It's a good thing. Yes? So you have all this magic stuff. Can you show us what it looks like outside your northern house? I'm going to show you that. Hold on to that question. I just want to get through these uh, switches. But I, here's the, the, the comment is all kinds of stuff nowadays. And that wasn't like that before. I was going to show you how to set up a home, set up a home on the app, and then how to uh, automate it, how to set up a home and then a room and then a device. Just go to YouTube and you can, you can find more ways to look at that. It's not hard. Maybe I'll just show you this one. Of These guys mumble, well, mm -hmm. that's one of the problems. Mm -hmm. accessories, setting timers and schedules, and also adding friends and family. I guess you could add strangers, but I guess that's not really what we're into here. So let's go ahead and get started. And the first prompt that we'll see is for location services. Now, you don't have to enable lo uh, location services. services. Now, from uh, within the settings app, we'll go down to the privacy submenu. We'll tap on that. Our first option is location services. Tap there. And we can see mine are already enabled, so we'll disable that for posterity's sake. And then we'll re-enable it. We'll tap on that home icon down there at the bottom. We want to just make sure that we have the air symbol back. We have a bare bones interface here. We can edit some of the details of our home on the top left. We won't worry about that now. And but that's what he did. He just added a home. So in the lower, you can see below there that little orange home. It's got a home set up. And then you add uh, add a device and you goes into a room. And the room that it goes into automatically is called the default room until you start setting up your own room. Uh, running out of time, that's why I've got them. <clears throat> and then the, the next one was how to automate some, uh, some uh, 
this was an automation type of uh, uh, YouTube device, uh, YouTube presentation, and it shows how to automate something. It's pretty intuitive. It works really well compared to what it was two years ago when you first got into this. We've got a couple of minutes you can show. All right, I can show one of these. Whoops, lost it. Hey, or, 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 and turn on a light in a room or something like that. So let's go and get started and just kind of go through a few of these. So let's say, uh, let's start with kind of like the basic ones, uh, which I think is probably the most popular, a time of day occurs. So let's say at um, sunset, and so turn on a light in a room. He's setting up an automation to turn a light on something around sunset. And these things have these uh, astronomical clocks in them. They know where your device is on the earth, and they know when sunset is, when sunrise is. And you can put it so many minutes or an hour or so before or after sunset or sunrise. So it changes the time of the year. And turn on a light in a room or something like that. So let's go and get started and just kind of go through a few of these. So let's say, uh, let's start with kind of like the basic ones, uh, which I think is probably the most popular, a time of day occurs. So let's say at um, sunset, we want a certain light to turn on. Now when we choose sunset or sunrise, we also get this little eye next to it. Basically we can choose uh, an hour before sunset or an hour after sunset. We want this automation to happen. We can choose that. Uh, we'll just choose it just right at sunset. And let's say we want it on just the weekend. So we can uncheck all of the weekdays. And we want this only to occur on the weekends. Now we also have a little option here for people. Uh, so we, if we want this automation to only occur if someone's home, for example, which would be kind of logical. We don't want a light to automatically turn on if no one's home. That wouldn't really make much sense and just be a waste of energy, but uh, you know, we, you can get creative and kind of play around with that on your own, but you have some options there. Let's go next. So let's say we want at sunset on the weekends, we want... So these are the various devices that he has. Got some in the basement, in the kitchen, outside that's like a, a group of devices, and he's going to turn one on. Wait, before you run out My of time, desk light. Right here to turn. I think it would really be interesting to your garage if you show me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. So we'll check that. And you can choose multiple things, uh, multiple lights to turn on at a certain time of day. And then this final page is just saying what do you want to happen with this accessory. So we can have it turn on, we can have it turn off, and then let's say if we want it to turn on at sunset, uh, we can have it be on kind of like a timer to turn off after a certain time as well, up to six. Yeah, that's where you can turn it off. You can turn it on for 20 minutes and then turn it off. And that's what that one is. So, uh, sorry to rush it, but... Uh, a couple of quick tips about getting started. Fortify your Wi-Fi network and your, your local area network. Uh, start small and start slow. Just start with the starter kit. Many of the manufacturers have a starter kit. But look for that works with Apple's home kit, if you're going to use the home kit. Mesh antennas, I was going to talk a little bit about that. Euro and Wi-Fi. Me this mesh system is about a year and a half old and it's, it's hitting the market very strong because Euro was just bought by Amazon about two months ago. <coughs> During the process, keep trying, experiment, change the devices on your hub first, or, or enroll them on your hub, your individual, like your Hue hub or your, your Lutron hub, and then connect them to HomeKit. They should automatically connect. And when you do stuff, it brings a big smile because 
press one button, all this stuff, all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So if this works, I gotta, I gotta connect my reflect. This is a ceiling I got a device. Well, let's hope that works. Oh, I got to get into play. I think you have to re-mirror. There we go. So, This is my garage in Buffalo. This is my garage in Buffalo. And when you uh, see the garage door up, you'll know it's not in Florida. <laughs> you will see snow. In fact, I think it's snowing today. But I wanted to emphasize a couple things here. Right here is a Wi Fi antenna. It's a, I didn't think I was going to need one, but I wired for it when I when the house was built three years ago, and I it works out that I'm using it all the time. That's the Wi-Fi antenna. It's u a unified access point, as the manufacturer's name. That's my ratio irrigation control device, and I pull the plug and the plug sitting down there because they blow out the lines, get the water out so it doesn't freeze. And then here is my, it's a Slage Connect Sense lock. And uh, you can see the screen there and Connect Sense uh, here. Oh, it's hooking up. That's a garage door. System. Both this is BMW, this is the BMW Connect, as well as the app for navigation, and it feeds back to the dealer data on my car. And uh, I haven't had it since we car, but they can say, you should bring it in, we see a problem. Maybe that's the way they get this, I don't know. But uh, I wish I could connect. Here we go. This is the garage side. Now, right here, when I flip this, I'll hit this. And you should look at the handle. It's at the bottom, just above the lever. There's that device. That it shouldn't hurt. Just opened up and the green, uh, the green lock, and I'll lock it now. I, I never heard that. <laughs> Did I hear it lock? No, no, no. But I heard it. There it goes. Lock. So that's that's one. 
And the, the other one is my Q. I'll get rid of that. Here's my Q. <clears throat> base ID under the Schnorr. Usually a crassin when I put my base in front of it. Oh, no. It's not falling. I hope it didn't break up. Yeah. Oh. There you go. In Buffalo. Right. Oh, look at the six skies coming in. <laughs> snow. Snow. That is snow. I mean, my drive, we have, uh, this is a condominium of single family patio homes, and there's usually a uh, snow plow guy. And he hasn't done it yet. It's just started today, about two or three inches, I think. It's, 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 it's telling you to alert. It's open. Yeah. Usually, I don't have it. It's not hooked up. You can hear it, too. You can normally hear it. Now it's going to... We hope. Oh, wait a minute. I know what the problem is. It's off there. I'll turn this in. All right. Now we hear it. It's going to beep about five times because it's saying nobody knows that this is going on. There might be somebody around the door, and this says the door is doing something, trying to get away. Now I'm going to close it. Bye bye, went out. Hear it? It's flashing. It's bright. Now, that was a trick to get to do that. I, I practiced that about 15 times. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, can I ask one question? Yes. Do you happen to know if obsolescence is a big issue? Do you happen to know if 5G is going to be uh, an issue with all this stuff? I think 5G is going to enhance this stuff. It's going to become even easier and the signal will be stronger. <laughs> Do we have to buy different equipment to get that question? Pardon? We have to buy 5G for the equipment. Yeah, 5G is at least two years away. But it'll hit the market and it'll hit it strong. Yeah, like we, within a year of that, we'll see a lot of devices. So about three years. The old, oh, thank the old, the old Wi-Fi stuff will still work with 5G. Oh, will it? Yeah. Of course. You won't have it. Yeah. yeah, with Wi-Fi it'll work. 5G is, yes. you know, you might have, you might have to buy new devices. Uh, different devices, but this is you can. I'll be able to run this stuff just like I got here for at least five or ten more years. Right. And I'll, I can assure you, I'll have all the new 5G stuff. <laughs>